The Earth is an island, swirling in an ocean of space. And just as living creatures dwell at the bottom of the ocean, swimming in a sea of darkness under incredible atmospheric pressures, some without oxygen, others deriving energy from deep sea thermal vents, there is life in the sea of space which surrounds us. Hundreds of miles above Earth, there are alien organisms which are self-illuminating and engage in complex actions, including what appears to be hunting and predatory behavior, and then accelerating to what may be the speed of light. Behavior is impossible for space junk or pieces of ice. And these alien organisms are attracted to electromagnetic storms and will gather by the hundreds above hurricanes raging hundreds of miles below. And when they gather, the hunting begins. And these hunters wiggle as they swim through space, making slight changes in their trajectory as they go, like sperm seeking ovum. But not all hunters are created equal. The hunter at the bottom of the screen strikes and passes through almost a dozen other creatures, whereas the one at the top strikes only two. In this sequence of NASA footage, which has been slowed down, the hunter strikes two others and is on the way to strike a third when NASA suddenly changed the field of focus. Yet another hunter strikes four in a row. There are over a dozen examples of this behavior in this film footage shot by NASA, most of which are not easy to see because NASA adds four layers of visual noise to obscure our view. Given the number of hunters, each striking numerous targets, and the speed of movement, which must be in excess of thousands of miles per hour, it is simply not reasonable to claim these are ice crystals and garbage floating in space. what may be coordinated actions between several different types of organisms, two of which strike at the exact same locations, but from completely different directions and at different speeds. These are not random acts. These behaviors serve some unknown alien purpose. If these behaviors are those of predators, hunting and killing is unknown. If they are engaging in some type of complex alien mating ritual involving the laying of eggs and fertilization, in which may involve multiple partners, each of which makes its own contributions to the procreative act, is a matter of speculation. And there is evidence from several shuttle missions that these organisms have flown alongside and have then flown away. In this sequence, the Space Shuttle Discovery was flying tail first into the darkness of night, and the ship's camera was pointed past the tail into the darkness. And in the blackness up ahead, there was a self-illuminating, glowing, pulsating orb traveling in the same orbit. But as it came closer, NASA shut down the camera. Later, as the crew of Discovery was using the camera to inspect the solar panels, a glowing, pulsating orb shot by. However, as the camera was set to infinity, it is impossible to determine the object's size or how far it was away. Space junk and ice crystals are not self-illuminating and do not pulsate with light. Yet another glowing, self-illuminating, pulsating orb emerged from below the space shuttle its trajectory taking it directly towards the shuttle. However, as it approached, NASA shut down the camera. A close-up, out-of-focus view indicates that this glowing orb has a similar shape to the same glowing organisms filled by numerous NASA shuttle missions. Here is yet another example of coordinated behavior involving numerous objects, four of which were flying in formation away from the remnants of a massive electrical storm. Hurricane Gordon. 
There are almost a dozen structures in this footage, four of which are in triangular formation, glowing and pulsating. These life forms are apparently attracted to electromagnetic activity, which is produced by hurricanes and thunderstorms, which can release more energy than the explosion of an atomic bomb. Here we have two pulsating objects approaching the raging storm from the northeast. Note they do not burn up as they enter the atmosphere. This self illuminating structure could not be reflecting sunlight as it was approaching from nighttime in the west. When electric storms and hurricanes begin to rage, hundreds of these organisms will gather above the thundering clouds. In this sequence, several dozen self illuminating structures can be discerned flying from all directions towards the storm. This pulsating organism approaches the storm from the southeast, and we can see that it slows its descent as it approaches the storm, which would be impossible if this were space junk or chunks of ice. Yet another pulsating object, whose pulsating pattern is distinctly different from the rest, approaches from the east. In this sequence we can see how all of these and other structures are approaching the storm and descending into the thundering clouds at varying speeds and from multiple directions in space. There are several dozen structures engaging in these behaviors, but because of the four layers of noise NASA has added, we are showing you only those which can be most easily viewed. Many of these objects were pulsing with light even though they were shrouded in darkness and had not reached the sunrise in the east. This tells us they were self-illuminating, which is also characteristic of various terrestrial life forms who use light to communicate and to seek partners for sex. Here again we can see what has to be a gigantic self-illuminating pulsating object flying at tremendous speed. NASA dismisses these objects as shooting stars, space junk, and ice crystals. But NASA is unable to explain how they self-illuminate even at night, why they slow their descent into the atmosphere and don't burn up, why they can speed up and change direction why they fly alongside the space shuttles, and why they can ascend into space. Perhaps some of this is space junk. However, we know that life is resilient and adaptive. Life has been found in every conceivable environment on Earth, from boiling hot springs to pools of radioactive waste. There is no reason to believe life cannot adapt to living in space.
Many of these structures behave like living organisms and should be classified as extraterrestrial extremophiles or biological UFOs. They engage in complex behaviors, complex interactions, will turn and follow other objects, making 45 degree turns, 90 degree turns, and sometimes completely turning around and reversing their direction of movement. They display behaviors and in the intelligence of simple life forms. These organisms also take a variety of shapes. The three most common are sperm-shaped, donut-shaped, and cone-shaped. Although we can only speculate, it may be that those who are cone-shaped become donut-shaped when they are pierced and penetrated by sperm-shaped hunter predators. What all have in common is an attraction to sources of electromagnetic activity, be it thunderstorms or in the case of Space Shuttle Mission STS-75, a satellite and tether which have been designed to generate electromagnetic force fields, electricity, and electromagnetic interactions between the tether, the satellite, and the surrounding space medium. The tether, which was 12 miles in length, was generating tremendous amounts of electromagnetic activity, and thus we see that like a moth drawn to a flame, hundreds, if not thousands, of these alien organisms began swarming around it, engaging in complex interactions with one another, and even crawling upon the tether, which was 12 miles long, and conducting electricity up and down its length, and generating electron beams, which it was shooting into space. If these extraterrestrial extremophiles are feeding on this energy, it is unknown. What we have seen here is evidence of alien extraterrestrial life forms engaging in complex purposeful behaviors and coordinated interactions which would be impossible if this were space junk or crystals of ice. And we have seen that these extraterrestrial life forms are self-illuminating. They are attracted to sources of electromagnetic activity, which is why they've been filmed repeatedly descending from space into hurricanes and storm clouds and gathering by the hundreds and engaging in complex interactions. The uh, binoculars, and um, the best way I can describe it is uh, there's some kind of um, reflective uh, cloth or um, with uh, some a metallic looking type of cloth uh, of a structure that's uh, definitely not rigid or uh, it's not a, um, a you know solid metal structure it started over uh, window eight uh, then quickly uh, moved towards the nose of the orbiter um, and we tracked it through window Okay, we're seeing three or four objects. Uh, can you can you confirm that it's just the one that's actually moving? The other ones are just reflect reflections. No, there are uh, there are three objects. The one you see, you see two rings right there. They're the ones we kind of had the late tally ho on. Uh, the one uh, down the bottom, that was the one we initially saw. Clearly their behavior is similar to a variety of life forms on Earth, including algae and other microorganisms. But these are not microscopic creatures. They have to be meters, if not several kilometers in size.
Perhaps they are not even carbon-based and have no DNA, but consist of electromagnetic plasmas, which is why they feast upon electric storms and can suddenly accelerate to tremendous speeds, maybe even traveling at the speed of light. Where do they go when they leave the proximity of Earth? Perhaps to cloud-covered Venus, or to Jupiter where Earth-sized storms commonly rage. Life is not confined to Earth, and there are alien life forms which are completely unlike those of Earth. Electromagnetic extraterrestrials feasting on electromagnetic storms in which may travel at the speed of light as they journey between the stars.